I'm back with another video. It's been a while since the last time I did a rant video. And this is something that I've been planning on doing for the past month or so. What am I ranting about this time? Well, in case I didn't tell by the title, I'm ranting about Kids Bop and why I refuse to review it. Some people already know what Kids Bop is. Now, for those who don't know, it's a music group that covers popular songs. It was created by Cliff Chenfeld and Craig Balsam, who happen to be the, the founders of the record label Razor & Tie. Razor & Tie is a record label that was established in 1990 and is owned by Concord, which also owns Kids Bop. I think the reason why they spell kids with a Z is because they think kids would think it's cool, but it doesn't look cool to me. The very first Kids Bop album was released on October 9th, 2001. Since then, 60 different compilations have been released under the Kids Bop brand. It sold over 21 million albums. Just in comparison, the band Creed has sold over 27 million albums in the U.S. alone, and that's out of the 53 million that they have sold worldwide. Creed's discography may not be as big as that of Kids Bob, but they still manage to sell more albums than just an EP, four studio albums, a greatest hits album, and a box set. In other words, Creed is more successful than Kids Bob in terms of album sales. At least Creed actually has talent, whereas Kids Bob is just a, just a bunch of overproduced and overcommercialized corporate bullshit that corporate pigs try to shove down everyone's throats. I know that Kids Bob is marketed to, towards kids, but I can tell you that there are kids who would call bullshit on this. Especially if they listen to the original versions of the songs prior to hearing those half assed covers. I was only six when the first Kids Bob album came out, and even then I wasn't interested. Kids Bob has branched out by selling merchandise, making music videos, and even going on tour. I've never actually seen any of those music videos, and I never will. When it comes to the tours, they toured every year in a row between 2014 and 2019. They were going to tour again in 2020, but that got pushed back a year because of COVID. And we got pushed back to this shitty year for the same reason. Honestly, I would never attend any of those concerts, even if they were performing in my area. Someone would make the argument saying that it's just for kids. But like I said earlier, even kids, the primary demographic for Kids Bop, would call bullshit on this. Despite the fact that I've never owned any of the Kids Bop albums, I've only listened to one of them, and it was the second one. The album was released on October 20th, I mean, uh, August 20th, 2002. The only reason why I listened to it was because a girl I went to middle school with had a copy of it on CD. When her dad put it on, my reaction was, holy shit, this is horrible. You know, to be honest, I didn't even finish listening to that album. When it comes to the Kids Bop discography, you know, there are 40 main albums, you know, a country album, two greatest hits albums, a few Christmas albums, and even an album where they sing covers of songs by the Beatles. When it comes to that, it covers that Beatles cover album that they did. You know, I mean, why would I listen to it when I could simply listen to the original versions? You know, then again, they've also made a few other they also made a few other albums. Around 2012 or 2013, I saw this uh, Kids Bop meme that had the caption, Oh, you like that song? Don't worry, we'll fuck it up for you. That's pretty much an accurate description of Kids Bop in a nutshell. With all honesty, I don't necessarily blame the children who are singing those awful covers. If anyone is to blame, it's the corporate pigs are bringing the kids into the studio to sing those songs. I don't know how much those kids are being paid, or even if they're getting paid at all. If anyone knows, be sure to let me know in the comments. When doing my research, I read that Kids Bop has attracted controversy. One notable example was in 2006 when the track list for Kids Bop 10 was revealed to feature a cover of the song Dance Dance by Fall Out Boy. The basis for Fall Out Boy, Pete Wentz, found out that Kids Bop never asked for permission from the original artist to cover the songs, but it still required permission to change the lyrics. Pete Wentz requested that the song should be removed. You know, from the track list due to its due to the sexual content within the lyrics. Razor and Ty would, would later re-release the track list, but without the cover of Dance Dance. Although I never paid attention to Fall Out Boy, nor did I grow up listening to their music, I have to admit that it's ridiculous that Kids Bop wanted to include a cover of Dance Dance to begin with. I'm going to leave a link to, to, the, to the news article about this in the description. 
Now, I know a lot of people from my generation you know, grew up with Fall Out Boy, but I've always been more of a Rise Against fan. You know, if you grew up with Fall Out Boy, that's fine. I have nothing against that. Also, there was a 2017 study about censorship within Kids Bop where they replaced certain words in the songs in order to try and make the songs more family friendly. Despite the fact that a number of kids have already listened to the original versions of the songs. And I'm going to leave a link to the, to the news article in the description regarding this. Overall, the main reason why I refuse to review any of the Kids Bop albums is not because of, of the number of albums they've made. And mainly because the entire concept of Kids Bob is completely pointless. I mean, why listen to a bunch of shitty covers when you can just listen to the original versions instead? You no, know, Kids Bob is mainly aimed towards kids, but you get what I mean. I mentioned earlier that they've sold over 21 million albums. I believe the main reason why is because the parents who because parents buy that shit for their kids without knowing how awful those cover songs are. Occasionally there are Kids Bob albums that are donated to my workplace. But hardly anyone shopping there ever buys them. I'd argue that the reason why the Kids Bop brand has lasted over 20 years, because the people in charge of the brand only care about making money, you know, instead of the actual, instead of caring about the actual quality of the song covers. In short, I refuse to add any of the Kids Bop albums to my collection. On top of that, I will not, you know, I will not be reviewing any of them anytime soon. I know that now. That's what I call music has been around a lot longer than Kids Bop had has a much more extensive discography, but I'm not collecting any of those albums, nor will I ever review them. I might do a rant video about Now That's What I Call Music, but only time will tell. Overall, I don't wish anything bad to happen to the people involved with Kids Bob. Maybe someday Concord will pull the plug, but you never know. I never see anyone on social media defending Kids Bob, which makes sense if you think about it. I think some people have reviewed some of the Kids Bop albums, but I haven't checked. If you're going to review any of the Kids Bop albums, then that's your decision and not mine. If you enjoy Kids Bop, regardless of what age you are, then that's fine, because it's not for me. I, oh, I honestly don't give a shit if people say that I'm a hater, just, you know, because a lot of other people who are not fans of Kids Bop whatsoever. So I'm obviously not alone. Anyways, that's all I have to say, and I needed to get this out of my system.